Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. This is Amiraj and I welcome you to the very first session of Federalism Chapter 2 of your CBSC Class 10 Political Science Term 1. So guys, today we'll be doing half of the chapter and in the next session we'll be completing with this chapter Federalism. I know since a long time I haven't delivered any of the educational lecture. Um, for the time being it's okay, but now uh, I will be regular with it. So you'll be getting all the lectures and remember now the approach is going to be different. Earlier our approach used to be theoretical, learning the points, then marking the points and memorizing them. Now, no. Now the approach is practical, understanding the things and then through understanding the concepts, keeping the things in mind. So I will teach you through this approach. Let's see if you understand. Okay, guys. So this is the chapter federalism which is an easy chapter, nothing much to do. Um, let's see the agenda. So basically, these are the topics which are there. What is federalism? What makes India a federal country? And how federalism is practiced and decentralization. Out of which, today we will be finishing up the two topics. Right, everyone? Topic number one, what is federalism? Topic number two, what makes India a federal country? This, these two topics will be covered in the next session, which will be delivered along, um, around after two to three days, right? You can stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, so we're getting started with federalism. First thing, whenever we think about anything in the world, we try to define that particular thing. Like if you are studying anything in social sciences, first you read about government. What is a government? Then you read about elections. You read about political parties. We read about power sharing. So we were trying to define everything. Similarly, this is also the definition of federalism, which can be an MCQ. The definition of federalism can be an MCQ. Okay. So let me read. Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between a central authority and various constituent units. So basically, you can relate federalism with your Vertical division of power, basically. Okay, federalism is vertical division of power since the power is shared between the central authority and its various constituent units that are the states or you can say the different regions of the country. So, as you are able to see in this picture, state government and central government. Right, everybody? Okay. So, usually what... Are you thorough with this definition? I hope you are. Power is divided. Division of power. We have taught, taught you vertical division and power sharing. Do check it out. Okay. Now, usually federation has two levels. Usually they are same. Not always. Usually it has two levels. Two levels. Right? One is the government for the entire country. That is usually responsible for a few subjects. For a few subjects, for a few topics to be looked after of common national interest. The others are governments at the level of provinces or states that look after much of day-to-day -day administrating of their state. So basically what happens that the other one looks after, this is the central government which is going to look after the whole nation for a few subjects. For a few topics, for a few concepts. But rest of the things will be looked after by the state governments the day-to-day -day administrating and the things related to the state clear and both these levels of government enjoy their power independent of the other it means the levels of government are not dependent on um, each other and they both are independent they have their different parts clear okay. now this is again an mcq question so please mark this one also now, there are basically two forms of government that are there in your chapter. One is your federal and one is unitary. Unitary, unitary one, units related to the one. What is federal? Federal has two levels. Unitary has mostly one level that is for the entire country which will be dominant also. Correct? Now, in federalism, there is, please take a screenshot of the slide. I want you to learn this. Now, in federalism, there is a division of power between the center and state government. Whereas in unitary government, there is no division of power. Either there is no division of power or the state government is subordinate to the central government. It means state government um, doesn't have its own power, but it is it has to work under the central government, which is of no use. Right? 
So state government has the power of its own hair. It doesn't have an examples are India and USA, federal and Britain and France as unitary. Clear? This is the federal one. This is the unitary. Clear? Okay. Now let's move on to the features of federalism. This was actually a five marker question. Five. But now since it's subjective, we need to go in depth. Okay, so first thing which you have to understand is jurisdiction because this word will be used. What is jurisdiction? Basically, let's say this is my Pratapnagar colony, for example. Right? So this is the jurisdiction, an area, a territory where you have some legal authority. The area may be defined in terms of the geographical boundaries, in terms of certain kinds of subjects so this is the area where you have your legal authority okay fine now the first feature of federalism is that there are two or more levels of government levels are also known as tires remember mcq so i'm telling you all the important mcqs please note them down in your notebook we are learning practically, right? There are two or more levels of government. First feature, central government, state government, and there is one local government. Okay, there is one local government also. Now, different types of government govern the same citizens, but each tier has its own jurisdiction. Citizens are the same, but their area is different of ruling, right? So that makes the difference. Clear everybody? And the third, the jurisdictions of each level are specified in the constitution that the existence and authority of each tier is constitutionally guaranteed. It means they are there in the constitution and this jurisdiction is of this person, this jurisdiction is of this authority. Clear? Now, the constitution's fundamental provisions cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government. Such changes require the consent of both the levels of government. So basically, they are talking about constitution's fundamental provision or you can say some of the rules and regulation okay rules and other stuff so that cannot be changed or that cannot be decided by only one level of government that means the consent the views of both the levels of government very very important mcq question mark this point judiciary has more power to interpret the constitution the powers of different levels of government so basically they interpret and make sure that the that everything is being followed so has power to interpret the constitution and example is supreme court in india has this power oh this is very clear clear everyone 